Oh, I really thought Mom had a ton of money saved up. I told you, didn't I? He cut out already to such here buddies. Us? What's the point of letting that jobless parasite stay here? I've been living here for three months, and my son and his wife drained my savings. They treat me like a maid. I was done with it all, so I left quietly. Just then, my son called me. Mom, what's going on? Tony sounded frantic on the phone. Around that time, something I did had become headline news across the United States. I'm Sarah, and I am 70 years old. I've been living in France for several years, but my health took a turn for the worse, so I came back to the States. My old apartment was gone, so I reached out to my son and his wife to see if I could stay with them for a while. Back to expectations, my only son, Tony, is 44 and works as an office employee. We lost touch while I was away, but I decided to reconnect, and Tony seemed glad to hear from me. I explained my situation and asked if I could stay for a while. Tony reluctantly agreed. It was awkward to impose on them, but the joy of seeing my family again overcame my hesitations. Just with a mix of nervousness and happiness, I took a taxi from the airport to their house. When I arrived, Tony and Alice greeted me at the entrance. My Tony looked happy. Alice was visibly unhappy. I plan to stay here for a few months. My belongings will be delivered later. I dropped off my carry-on bag and went to the living room. We chatted about our daily lives and jobs, as well as my recent life in France. When Tony asked why I'd moved to France, I just said, I'm getting old and wanted to enjoy the French countryside. Tony laughed, but Alice remained unhappy. Then we discussed my health issues. I'd been having severe dizziness and was told it might be Meniere's disease. When a seizure occurs, people may be unable to stand because their surroundings are spinning, and they may feel nauseous. I feel insecure living alone, so I wanted to stay with them until my condition stabilizes. After our conversation, I went back to the entrance to grab my belongings from my carry-on. As I was organizing my stuff in the hallway, I overheard Tony and Nellis' conversation. Tony, I'm just serious about letting Sarah stay. I don't want to live with an old woman. Come on, she's my mom. You also work part-time, so it's not like you'll always be around. I'll burst at sick tree and deal about what about her days off? How long she planned on this to stay? I want gone. Don't talk like that. Mama will eventually leave. We can discuss finances tomorrow. Let's keep it down. She might hear you. I can't hear so. It's old. How Christmas. H brings sharp ears for insults. And there I was, eavesdropping on their conversation in the cold hallway. I feel bad for imposing on Tony and his wife so suddenly. I'm sure it's a big inconvenience for them. But you know, I'm really happy to be spending time with Tony and his wife after all these years apart. When Tony was young, I raised him as a single mom after losing my husband. We didn't have much, and Tony had his share of hardships dealing with illness and all. This isn't making up for that, but I wanted to come here to share my apologies and gratitude. That's why I came to this house. It's a shame I'm not welcomed, but they've got their own lives to live. I went to the guest room they gave me, trying to settle my anxious heart. Next morning, Tony left for work, and it was just Alice and me. Well, I was doing some crafting on the living room sofa. Alice stood before me. I'm looking around. I noticed fabric scraps and threads scattered about. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll clean it up. Do you know what this is? I showed her the small pouch I was sewing. It had a little green turtle design on it. This is a turtle pouch. I love turtles, so I make little turtle-themed crafts. It even has a zipper on its shell, too. Blush. Action like wonder see expect that's nice but sir you can't just hang around here all day alice cut me off clearly uninterested and sighed heavily at least go somewhere else when i'm off from my part-time job somebody or why part-time job or such stuff but i get dizzy if i go outside too much i'll drive you to the nearby community center so stay there during the day i have things to do at home also, help with the cores while you're here. Or be on dead driven! It's the least you can do since we're letting you stay. And don't do crafts. Do some cleaning and laundry. And is your trust put for a scrand? I finally said, Alright, slowly got up from the sofa. 
From then on, I ended up doing all the housework. Though dizzy and sore, I took on the chores. Alice and Tony treated me like a housekeeper. Alice seemed addicted to social media, constantly on her phone. It looked like she hadn't been keeping up with the housework before I came. That night, Mom, did you bring your banking card? When Tony got home, he talked to me with a smile. I don't mind you living with us, but life costs money. Could you chip him? I looked at Tony over my reading glasses, nodded and stood up. I pulled the banking card from my handmade pouch and handed it to Tony. He checked it quickly and his face tightened. Wait, um, is this all you've saved? This any other account? That's all I have. I don't need much at my age. The chronic illnesses or anything. As the conversation continued, Tony's expression darkened. Man, this is not enough money. Not even 10,000? You said you were living large abroad, so I assumed. Tony kept pestering me, asking if I had any more money. When I said no, he sighed and slumped his shoulders. I'm f fine. I'll hang on to this cash for now. I'm doing you a favor letting you live here, so this is the least you could do. After getting my account password, Tony grabbed my bank and debit cards and left the room. That night, lying in bed, I could hear Tony tutting through the wall that separated our rooms. Ugh, this is a letdown. I totally thought mom was loaded. Her household is actually in the red. Shouldn't have said she could stay. The two of them seemed confident I couldn't hear, talking freely in the next room. Or maybe they wanted me to hear them, just in my cold bed. I was holding back tears of loneliness and sorrow. The next day, since Alice had a day off, she drove me to the local community center. I opened my carry bag to continue my handiwork in the lounge area, but realized I had left the essential fabric at home. I hesitated, but I couldn't ask Alice to go back and get it. Fortunately, my dizziness was under control today. I knew this area, so I decided to take a walk home to get the fabric. Finally arriving, I glanced through the veranda into the house. Alice and an unfamiliar man were there. At first, I thought he was a visitor, but they seemed intimately close. I hesitated outside for a while, then turned back without entering the house. So that's why they wanted me out, so I wouldn't interrupt the affair. Back at the community center, I kept thinking about Alice and that man and decided to call someone for advice. And from now on, I avoided bringing up the man and continued interacting with Tony and his wife. However, whenever I left the house, I would conspicuously place a red turtle pouch at the edge of the living room side table. Three months had passed since I started staying with Tony's family. By this point, I essentially become the household's maid. When I was at home, I had to do endless chores, and when Alice was home, I was relegated to the community center. My savings had mostly been drained by Tony, a man with a gambling addiction who spent most of his free time on lotteries and slots. It seemed his fixation on money stemmed from the financial hardships he suffered as a child. I initially tried to intervene but eventually gave up since mentioning it always enraged him. Three months in, and I couldn't take it anymore. Fix one night before a long weekend. I decided to bring up something I'd been considering. Tony, Alice, thank you for letting me stay with you. Unni, I know I made things hard for you when you were young by not having much money. I'm sorry for all the trouble I've caused, but I'm grateful. I pulled out a homemade turtle pouch from the table. It was green with a zipper on the shell. This is a token of my gratitude to both of you. I hope you'll accept it. Contrary to my expectations, neither Tony nor Alice showed any interest in my handmade pouch. Mom, enough of that. Are we really out of money? Think about the French account or something. I mean, I told you, we're out of money. Look, I worked out really hard on this. Can't you just take it as a token of my love? Remember how happy you were when you were little and I would fill the shell with candy and some pocket money? Tony starts to get increasingly irritated. I'm not a kid anymore. I'm not happy receiving something like this. Sarah, how much longer are you planning to mooch off us? Honestly, it's annoying. Tony and his wife give me a cold look. Desperate. I asked Tony. Do you remember Joe? He helped us out in that old apartment. Do you remember Joe? He helped us out in that old apartment we lived in. What? I don't remember. Stop bringing up old stories. Are we done? Turned into silence. I clench the turtle pouch in my hand and feel the texture of the paper inside. The next day, Tony and his wife go on a vacation, leaving me behind. I had planned to leave the house after yesterday's conversation, so I quickly packed my bags with the arranged carrier and sent them off to my home in France. I also don't forget to put the red turtle pouch into my carry-on bag.
I leave a simple note of thanks and goodbye on the table and left the house where I had been staying for three months. After that, I didn't return home immediately. Instead, I stayed in a US hotel for a while. I had things to do, and I thought Tony and his wife would contact me. Sure enough, about two weeks later, Tony calls. Man, what's going on? A turtle pouch. It's yours, isn't it? From his words, Tony screams over the phone. Ah, you noticed, dear, and be honest. I wasn't surprised when I saw the news on the TV. The turtle-shaped pouch I had planned to give to Tony and his wife, and the inside it was a check for one million dollars. It was my way of saying thanks for all they've done, and to apologize for all the trouble I caused as a kid. People might find it shallow to atone with money, but I had dreamt of the day I could give it to them, saving up bit by bit over 40 years. I did some digging before meeting Tony after a long time and found that he was in debt. He had tried to pay off gambling debts with more gambling, only to find himself sinking deeper. He had a steady job, I just wanted him to clear his debts and live peacefully, but they refused to accept my gesture. They'd completely forgotten about the kindness they had shown to my family and me. So, I decided to divide that million dollar check into smaller sums and donate it to charities and welfare organizations across America. I placed the donations in that handmade turtle pouch and sent it anonymously. The turtle pouch became a sensation, making headlines and trending on social media. Alice saw it on social media. Isn't that the turtle pouch mom made? So that means you are going to give us one filled with money too. Yes, exactly. That was my way of saying thank you, and I'm sorry. I had been crafting both the pouch and saving them with the pouch and saving the money to give to you. Well, you could have said that. If you didn't want my feelings, then you don't need my money either. Tony was yelling on the phone, completely unhinged. It's my money. How dare you save me? I couldn't listen anymore and pulled the phone away from my ear. After a moment, I spoke. I got tears, Sash, or you deaf. Young Yuri ahead of me, a headache. There's one more turtle, and if you really want it, it's yours. Tony finally settled down and reiterated his desire for the turtle. We agreed to meet later at a cafe. And on the day, I took the last red turtle and an envelope to our meeting spot. Tony and his wife were already there and demanded the money before I even sat down. When I silently pulled out the red turtle, Tony snatched it, immediately unzipping its shell. Inside was not a check, but a small electronic device. What the heck is this? He confused. I could Tony fiddled with the device. He found a tiny button and pressed it. A voice began to play, and Alice, standing next to Tony, immediately changed color. Sitting next to Tony, Alice's expression changed when she heard the voice recording. It was Alice's voice, talking warmly with another man that wasn't Tony. Who's this? Why? And yet, um, what's happening? Earth's history. This card. Alice seemed to finally realize that it was a recording of her having an affair at home. She tried to snatch the recorder from Tony's hand, but Tony didn't let go. While they grappled, I opened the envelope I'd brought and laid out several pictures on the table. Photos of Alice cheating with another man at home. Potentially with irrefutable evidence. Alice was flustered and kept muttering. Why? Tony picked up the photos one by one, examining them intently. Since I came to your house, something seemed off. A friend told me I could hire someone to find out and even offer to cover the costs. At first it him zero. What's your problem? Why would you do this? Well, you're my son's wife. It's sad to think family is deceiving each other. You'll understand when you're older. I guess fate brought me here to discover your infidelity. Alice, have you been lying to me all along? Since when? Tony, you've got your own secrets too. If you're blaming her for cheating, you need to fess up as well. What? I've never cheated. Tony fell silent, and now it was Alice's turn to speak. Papa and yo! Wasting all money on gambling? I only use the money I earn. And you have your part-time job, so you should have some money. It's twisting to their squabble. I sighed. This couple had somehow managed to keep it together until now. Either of you has any money. Tony, you're 40k in debt. Alice, you've been giving all your earnings to your affair partner. I had the investigator check your finances too. Both Tony and Alice were shocked and they began shouting at each other. I was floored when I first heard the investigation results. This couple was on the brink of bankruptcy. 
Look, we can pay back the debt if we get mom's money. So give it to us now. I donated all the money. The only thing left is this red turtle figurine. You blew through my savings on gambling, remember? What? You're kidding me. All of it. Enraged, Tony lunged at me across the table. Other customers started to pay attention, and the staff hurried over. The one million is mine. It was supposed to be mine. Give it that. Soon, the police had to be called to restrain Tony. After the police talked some sense into him, they kindly escorted me back to my hotel due to my concerns about Tony's aggressive behavior. For a week later, Tony and Alice's relationship had deteriorated beyond repair due to the affair and debt. They got divorced. Tony, now single, got even more consumed with gambling, accruing more debt. He was caught trying to embezzle company funds. He avoided criminal charges but was fired. To make matters worse, his outburst at the cafe was captured on video and spread on social media, making it difficult for him to find another job. Unable to bear the shame, Tony cut off all contact and disappeared. After the divorce, Alice had no one to rely on and moved into an old public housing unit, living alone. Just before I could make a donation for the turtle rescue, it appears my online post mocking my own turtle went viral. Alice started facing harassment and stalking, which eventually spread to her part-time job and got her fired. Even the man she was having an affair with grew tired of her and left. But now, without any income, she's living on Tanfei temporary assistance for needy families. After that, I returned to my home in France. Once I finished unpacking in my apartment, I changed in a dress with practiced ease. As I was reviewing some work documents, I heard a noise at the entrance. It seemed Joe, my cohabitant, had returned home. Hey, Don M. President, welcome back. How was your trip to America after so long? Joe came over with a smile, setting down his coat and bags. Joe is 75 years old. He was a resident in the same apartment complex where my son Tony and I lived years ago. Back then, I was struggling with poverty, having lost my husband and caring for a young, asthmatic Tony. With no utilities and with no one to turn to, I was desperate and considered ending it all. It was Joe and his wife, our upstairs neighbors, who saved us. They were our lifelines. Just call me Sarah. Bart kisses is Alicia's brother, Dataway. I'm back, back, and look. Shootless matter each, then perhaps for many souvenirs. Go out, all my favorites. Thanks. I'll take some to the storytelling event at the community center tomorrow. Joe examined each of the piled up souvenirs on the table, his face beaming. After we've gotten back on our feet, Joe and his wife moved away for work. Years later, we bumped into each other in the city, and I began helping with a support program for the needy that Joe had founded. Joe's wife had passed away by then, and we started working together as business and life partners. I've been leading the organization since Joe retired a few years ago. What started as a small operation by Joe and me has grown into a large-scale international organization over the past 30 years. Currently, we're focusing on supporting single mothers in raising their children. We moved to France a few years ago to study their advanced support systems. Although we've become quite known in France, we're still not widely recognized in America. I plan to expand our activities there soon and wanted to spend time with Tony and his family as just a mom before they found out about my work. In the end, I couldn't get them to understand how I felt. But that's their choice. Even if it was for a brief moment, I was happy to spend time as a family. I am now 70 years old, but it's just 70. There's still much I want and need to do. I straightened my back in my dress and began thinking about my international speech for tomorrow.